The game of Go is an ancient strategy game that requires creativity, intuition, and foresight. It's a lot like chess, but because you can make far more moves at any one point, it's a lot harder to write a computer program that can play it. In fact, it's so hard that for a long time it was considered a grand challenge of artificial intelligence, AI for short. Now, a little bit over 20 years ago, I was an undergraduate studying computer science, and I got curious about this problem. And I thought, how hard can it really be? Well, I wrote an AI to play Go, and it was rubbish. It didn't win a single game against humans, not even against me. And I took this to mean, honestly, it's impossible. It'll never be done. Well, 13 years later, I was proven very wrong indeed. A system called AlphaGo, developed by DeepMind, beat Lisa Doll, who was widely considered one of the greatest Go players of that decade. This was a really big moment. It was pivotal for AI and pivotal for my own career. You see, I had closed that chapter of my career marked AI, and I'd gone off to California to make video games for a living. But I heard about this, and I got curious again. I got inspired by this, and to cut a long story short, I now work at the company that did this amazing, impossible thing. And so I want to share with you why I came back to AI and why I go to work every day excited about the future. Now, how many of you have interacted with an AI system today? Maybe once, maybe a couple of times? I stopped counting after I realized I'd interacted with one at least 30 times today, just in my everyday life, from getting up to standing here right now. My smart watch woke me up at the right time. I got here in one piece and didn't get lost. That's a lot of AI just managing that and I was able to see that there was a package at my front door. I'm not going to go through my whole day exhaustively, but you get the idea. AI is already really, really helpful in our everyday normal lives. But it's 2024. We have much bigger problems than whether I can still unlock my phone if I'm wearing sunglasses. Complex, global, scary, impossible problems like climate change, poverty, disease, inequality, access to basic human rights. Well, I think that AI is a force for good that can help with all of these problems. In fact, it's already starting to help with them. Now, let's talk about that. Let's talk about proteins. So proteins are molecules that are essential inside the human body. They do a lot of the heavy lifting, and inside other organisms, too. They're made up of building blocks called amino acids, which attract and repel each other in interesting ways. And I like to think of this as having a string of beads, where every bead is a funky kind of magnet. If you let go of that string, it would collapse in on itself in something that is called, literally my favorite term in all of science, spontaneous origami. It folds up into a 3D shape that is unique to every protein. And knowing the shape of a protein is really useful. We can study it. We can find out more about what it does. We can find out about how other molecules interact with that protein. But it's expensive. It can take a single scientist multiple years to find one protein structure in a lab. And there are over 200 million of these known to science. Now, luckily, this turns out to be a perfectly shaped problem for AI to have a go at. There's a process within AI called supervised machine learning, which is really, really good at taking a bunch of things that are well known. For example, 100,000 proteins whose structures have been experimentally determined, and generalizing that to a bunch of things that look very similar, but are not yet known, the structures of all the other proteins. And the question really was, would it be good enough in this case? And the answer, surprisingly for a lot of people, was yes. In 2018, DeepMind unveiled AlphaFold, which showed that you could predict the structure of proteins using machine learning. And by 2022, AlphaFold 2 had published over 214 million protein structures for the scientific community to use, from just those 100,000 that we knew before. And it's hard to overstate what this means for science. People are already using these structures to do things like investigate treatments for early-onset Parkinson's disease. They're developing enzymes that can interact with plastics better to clean up the environment. And they're developing vaccines against diseases like malaria. 
which are a huge threat in places like sub-Saharan Africa. Developments like AlphaFold have the potential to change and save millions of lives. And it's not just this one system. It's my favorite, because I love the story. But there are plenty more examples of how AI is helping science today. Everything from helping airplanes travel through the air in ways that are more climate friendly, to saving endangered species, to increasing our data collection for agriculture, which itself can have a huge impact on poverty. And these are all great, but what they all have in common is that AI did not come up with these ideas in a vacuum. Humans did. It took an individual with passion for a problem in the world, determination, and a spark of AI magic to really have that lasting impact on the world around. And I want to talk to you about some of the people who are themselves having an impact on AI. We have researchers like Dr. Fei-Fei Li, who leads the Center for Human-Centered AI at Stanford University. She has published over 300 research papers and is the inventor of a database called ImageNet, which is a large-scale collection of images that have been very painstakingly labeled with what exactly is in the image and where. This led to a breakthrough in AI where we found that the better the data you put into an AI system, the better the results. Now, that might sound obvious, but it really wasn't at the time. And it's something that continues to drive innovation, even in today's AI systems. We also have researchers like Dr. Kerry McInerney over in Cambridge, whose research sits at the intersection of ethics, feminism, and critical race theory, because AI is nothing without society. Dr. McInerney's research looks at things like how bias can spread through an AI system that you might think on the service is impartial. And my favorite project of theirs is in fact looking at how AI scientists in film are portrayed more often by men than is actually true in reality. For once, truth is stranger, the truth is better than fiction, which is nice to see. Moving away from science, we also have artists like Su Gwen Chung. Now, Su Gwen's work really helps us create a question what creativity is in the age of machines and robots. They use their own body movements, their artwork, and data from their brain activity to create this collaborative performance painting alongside robots, and really helps us question what is art? What does it mean to be human? Quest big questions like that. We also have leaders who are bringing these AI technologies into the hands of the whole world. Leaders like Mira Murati, who's the CTO, Chief Technology Officer of OpenAI, the company that makes ChatGPT. With Mira's leadership, OpenAI have brought experimental AI out of the lab and into our hands, and really sparked the wave of, of developments in large language models. With her at the helm, ChatGPT has become the fastest growing app in internet history. That's no mean feat. We also have people like Leela Ibrahim, down the road in London. Leela's the chief operations officer of Google DeepMind and leads the responsible AI work there, helping make sure that AlphaFold benefited less privileged groups of scientists. She also has a huge vo voice for inclusion and the value a new perspective can bring and represents that at the world stage, helping leaders get to grips with the future of AI at venues like Davos. Now, these researchers, challengers, artists and leaders are shaping the world of AI today. But what about tomorrow? Well, I don't know. And I love that I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. It's an amazing time. I said how one single AI system, AlphaFold, is going to revolutionize science, potentially for generations. And there are so many other problems out there that we haven't solved, things that we thought were impossible that maybe aren't anymore. And all it's going to take is a person Anybody with passion, determination, curiosity, and the empowerment of technology to have a real meaningful impact on the world. And it might seem really implausible to achieve that sitting in a schoolroom. There isn't an obvious path from A to B. But if my career has taught me nothing, it's that things are not a straight line. You don't always need to have a plan. But what you do need is curiosity. And if anybody says to you that something's impossible, ask them, how do you get started? Thank you. <laughs>